Okay, I'm going to do your homework. Um, and you're going to check your work. Now, uh, the best way for you to do this is to do a page and then watch the video and check your work. And then if there's something that you go, I didn't get this right, you, you can sort of listen to it. But if you're really good at some of these things on any given page, you can put the video on two times or something like that and just uh, go through it. So here we go. Uh, this first couple of pages is literally just spelling all your major and minor scales. And for the most part, the major and minor scales are going to be put side by side parallel. So you can see C major, C minor, F major, F minor to help you reinforce the idea that when you take a major scale and you lower notes three, six, and seven, you get the parallel minor, and we're talking about natural minor scales, right? And then if you compare note number seven, where you've raised it back up, right, in the minor, then you're gonna get the leading tone, which is part of the harmonic minor. Also, all the way through, it's using tonic for one, supertonic for two, median three, subtonic four, dominant five, median for six. Subtonic is the seven that's down a whole step from the root, which occurs normally in a natural minor scale, right? And it doesn't happen in the major scale because the major seven, its scale degree is a leading tone. It's a half step below, okay? This is giving us ready so that you can spot pick the differences out between these two scales, which is something we want you to get beyond just spelling your scales. We want you to eventually be able to have the, you know, the ability to say this note is this, this note is this, to access it like a computer almost. So I'm going to go quickly. From now on, I'm going to try not to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chord. I'm just going to use the names to get you used to that as well. Okay, so here we go. C major is C, D, E, F, G, A, and then leading tone is B. doesn't have a subtonic. So here, I'm going to lower 3, 6, and 7, or the median. It's a uh, uh, mistake on the entire page. These are submedians. Typos. Badness on me. I'm just going to fix that right now all the way through. Okay, 6. So median becomes E flat, F, G. Submedian becomes A flat. And then if we're going to take the leading tone and lower it down, then... We have to um, we have to change it into subtonic because the B will become B flat. Sorry, plug came out of the wall. But then if we were to leave it, you know, to break the key signature and bring it back up for our leading tone or seven diminished chord or a dominant chord, spell it as a dominant, we put it up to be natural. You don't have to put natural in there. I just did that for emphasis. Okay? Lowered the median, lowered the submedian, lowered the leading tone into the subtonic. Right? All right, let's do this one. F has one flat, B flat, right? We've learned that. So then C, submedian is going to be D, and then E is my half step down, right? I'm going to lower my median, right, which is my three. B flat stays the same. Lower my submedian. My leading tone gets lowered and becomes the subtonic right there. And then if I did need it for those chords, I put there B flat. Two flats, B flat, C, D, E flat there, F, and then just G and A, half step below my tonic, right? I'm going to lower the median, the submedian, and the leading tone into the subtonic, right? So, so D becomes flat, E flat, F, G becomes flat, A becomes flat for the subtonic, and then A again if I wanted it to be leading tone. E flat major has got three flats, so E flat, F. G, A flat, B flat. Those are my three flats, right? Okay. Submedian to C. D is my leading tone. Obviously, you could redo the tonic up top, but it's redundant, right? Okay. Lowering three or median, right? Lowering submedian, lowering leading tone into subtonic, and then, of course, leading tone stays the same, right? Okay. The G major scale, it's got one, right? So it's just got an F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and then E for my submedian, F sharp right there. For my minor, it's gonna be G, A, lower the median, lower the submedian, lower this into my subtonic, and the sharp and the flat, the adats cancel out. And there we are for that, if we're making five or seven chords. 
D major, it's D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. I don't know if you've noticed this, but that the last sharp that you add is always note number seven, makes it a half step below the tonic, right? And then the next one over, when you go from one sharp to two sharp scale, this jumps down to the median and then five steps up. It's a little pattern. Okay, D minor, I'm gonna lower the third, right there, the median, right? And then I'm gonna lower the submedian, and then I'm gonna lower this to become the subtonic. And then that's my leading tone still right there. Okay. So I'm gonna keep going to stick through this section. Okay. And make sure that's still in camera frame. No, that looks okay. Alright. A major. It's got A, B, C sharp, D, E. These are all supposed to be submediants. I have to go back to my original document and fix that. That's a typo. That's what happens when you copy and paste and you don't proofread well enough. Okay, and then uh, F sharp and leading tone is G sharp and then tonic would be A, right? A, B, C lowered, right? D, E lowered, F lowered, G, G sharp on the leading tone. You might say, but isn't that just a C major scale? Yeah. When you do these kind of scales like A, and A sharp and A flat minor and stuff like that. You just want to remember the relative major. That's true for lots of these. And so I'm not saying you have to think of the scale this way, but we're reinforcing this pattern. It's another way to get to that scale, okay? E major, it's got four sharps, right? E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B is my dominant, C sharp, and then D sharp. Love this scale. So we're gonna lower the median, all right? And then we're going to lower the submedian. We're going to lower the leading tone to make it the subtonic, a whole step below instead of a half step below. And if we did need the leading tone for a harmonic minor scale, which builds fives and seven chords, dominant basically function chords, we want that T to the sound right there. B, five sharps. Everything sharp except for B and E. So now I'm not thinking about where all the sharps are. I'm just thinking sharp everything except for these two right there, right? And so G sharp, and then A sharp, right? One, two, three, four, five sharps. Not B and E. Now I'm shifting my B flat major scale up, right? And then B, C sharp, lower that, right? Lower the submedian, right? G, lower this to become the subtonic, and then of course retain it for if we want to do a leading tone harmonic minor chords, right? F sharp major, everything's sharp except for B, right? So F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, not U, C sharp, D sharp, and E sharp. And we don't even care that it looks like an F note. It's note number seven. If one is F of any kind, seven is E, okay? And then we're going to lower this. Now, you may have thought, well, I like doing this thing as the relative to A major, three sharps. Yeah, that's great. For this worksheet, we're just doing it the other way too, right? So there we go, there we go. Now we lower the median, and we lower the submedian, and we lower that, right? The thing about it is, is like, you've progressed so far, and, and that's great. And so this is another way to make you review your scales, but it's, you know, if we reinforce the other way of constructing them, maybe for a scale that you're not as good at, you go like, oh, wait, that really helps. So it might not be for every scale, but for some of them. All right. C sharp major, everything sharp. D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp dominant. There's my scale degree six of medium, right? And B sharp, right? Everything sharp. It's not a C. B sharp, because this is note number one. That's note number seven, C's and B's, right? C sharp minor, we're just going to lower the median right there. And F sharp. G sharp, we're going to lower the submedian right there. We're going to lower this to become the subtonic, whole step below, and then we retain it when we want it to be a leading tone. All right, A flat major, four flats, right? So A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, and then F, and then G. And, you know, you can take it by taking your A chord, A scale, and bringing it down, or you could just memorize it, right? In some ways, the switching these is really easy once you've got the first scale. And if you're struggling with this, you might go like, uh huh, I've identified some scales that I have to think about. Like, you should just be able to write out a scale without thinking about it more than just like that, right? And, uh, you know, 
if you can't, then, you know, there's 15 major scales. It's worth looking at just to tighten up that one or two that makes you feel a little nervous about things, right? All right, last page of these. They don't have majors and minors. There are a certain number of scales that don't have, like, um, parallel majors and minors because that would end up making us use double sharps or something like that or flat, you know, double flats and things. Like, for instance, if I wanted a G flat major, that's fine, right? You take the G major scale and you lower everything, right? So G flat, A flat, B flat. C flat, D flat, E flat, and then my F sharp from the G major scale just becomes plain old F. But there is no G flat minor because that would mean taking this down a third and we have a B double flat and then the submedian, sorry, I'm gonna fix these again, would also be, we'd have a double flat there, right? We'd have E double flat and we don't have double flats and double sharps in our key signatures. So they're usable, but not, not in key signatures. So there's not the equivalent of that. You use the F-sharp minor. There's an overlap, right? Some of them, most of them have a parallel major and minor starting on the same note. Some of them have enharmonic equivalents to avoid double flatting things, okay? A-sharp minor, well, how do we do this? Like, you could remember that A minor's got nothing and then sharp everything, or that the relative major is C-sharp major, right? Or you could make an A major scale and then lower three and six and seven, and then you could sharp everything, but that's a long way through. Just remember that this is the same as C sharp major, or you can make an A minor scale if you have that, and then sharp everything afterwards. So either way, A sharp, B sharp, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, this is incorrect. That's a typo. We did this in class. G sharp, right? So everything's all sharp. Now, if we want the leading tone, we have to take subtonic and raise it back up. And so you're going to get a G double sharp. Not going to appear in the key signature, but will appear in the music when we need to make a dominant five chord or a leading tone, seven diminished. Okay? Here, D flat. I would write this by just thinking of my D scale and then lowering everything if you don't have it memorized but with a little practice you'll have it memorized so everything is going to be flat except for f and c right so f two, oops flats right a flat and then b flat and then c f and c think of d major and lowering everything right okay g sharp minor again if you take g major and then you sharp everything you end up you know to make the parallel major you'd end up with an F double sharp, right? That being said, I think you can do this a bunch of different ways. Like you could say it's the same as B. So that means B and E are not gonna be sharp. Like the relative major is B and E, or you could make a G minor scale, right? Which is gonna have a B flat and an E flat, and you could raise everything up. Or you could make a G major scale, lower three, six, and seven, and then raise everything up with a sharp. And that sounds laborious, but it's not that bad. You get get fast to that. Or you can just memorize it, like G sharp, A sharp, B, right? C sharp, D sharp, E. Because you start to learn that in the minor scale, that's a half step down, and that's a half step down. And as long as these are anchored really well, then you just go a half step, right? And then this is a whole step up from here, like that, right? And then if we want the leading tone, we have to take this up a half step. I think that's actually very useful to think, well, in the minor, the median is always a half step above there, and in the, the med submedian is always a half step above there, and the leading tone is always a half step above there, right? All right, C flat major, that's memorized, right? C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. There's no subtonic in there. D sharp minor, you know, um, if you know your D minor scale, that would be fine. You could sharp everything. I'm going to just do this again. <clears throat> sort of a hybrid, which is I know where my half steps are, right? Half steps are between here and here and here and here. So I'm going to go D sharp, whole step up to here, E sharp. What's a half step up from E sharp? F sharp, right? And then whole step, G sharp, A sharp. What's a half step up from here to here? Well, that's B. What's a whole step up to there? It's C sharp. If I take this up another half step to make it a leading tone, it's there. Okay. This is a good review. And if you're struggling with any of these, you've got your flashcards and you can certainly just write them out and write them out and write them out. Okay. 
Next section. This is, this is really what this is all about. Right here. Okay. This is um, to help you spot grab the notes that are different between um, C, well, a major, major and parallel minor. So the median, three, the submediant, six. These are the ones we lowered. They're going to be lower in the minor than they are in the major. Same thing for subtonic, right? And leading tone. So this now makes you go through and spot grab these things out. It's a little more difficult because you have to think, well, what is that actual note? And then what is it in major? What is it in minor? Okay. But we're going to burn through these anyways. So in C major, median is three. In C minor, it's E flat. C major, submedian to six, that's an A, A flat. C major, there is no subtonic. Oops, pencil broke. There is no subtonic, right? But in here, it's B flat, a whole step below. And the leading tone is B, right? Because there is one there. And it's also B in minor because we raised this back up, okay? Here we go for F. F to A, which is A flat for the minor. F to D, right? Which is D flat for the minor half step lower we lowered those right subtonic doesn't exist in major but it's a whole step below tonic there leading tone is the same for both of those b flat major the median is d if you're like how do you do that we'll spell your triad b flat df right and then b minor triad b flat minor d flat okay going down the other direction it's going to be a g g b flat d g flat subtonic doesn't exist in major in minor it'll be a flat a whole step below there Leading tone is going to be an A. It's also going to be an A. I guess this is going pretty quickly, actually. Okay, if you know these. If you don't, then you'll have to slowly kind of go through them. But that's the practice that makes you better. So E flat, the median is going to be G. E flat minor is going to be G flat. Going down, it's a C. Going down here, it's a C flat. There is no subtonic. E minor is going to be a whole step below. So that's going to be D flat. Careful, um, I think one of the mistakes some people do when they do this is they'll put an F there, and it's because you're thinking whole step, but you're going in the wrong direction, okay? Moving on, D for leading tone, D for leading tone, going on to the key of G. G major, median, B, B flat for there. Again, spell your triads and you'll get that. E for here, E flat for there. Up here, is this still in camera frame? It looks like it's in camera frame. Uh, hold on. I'm just going to check that. Yeah, it's still in camera frame. Subtonic will be not existing here, but F for there, right? G major leading tone is F sharp, F sharp. D major is an F sharp because you're making your D major triad, D major scale, F natural. And then it's going to go down to a B and a B flat, right? Subtonic doesn't exist. It's going to be a C leading tone is C sharp, C sharp. I know I'm cruising through this, but that's just because there's so many of them. You should do some work and then come and look at this. Right? All right. Um, how many more? Oh, just two more pages. Again, if it's uh, if you're good at it, it's no big thing. If you're not good at it, you need to practice. Okay. A major, median, C sharp. A minor, C. A major, sub median. It's going to go down to the F sharp and down to the F, you know. This is a minor third up and a major third down. This is a major third up and a minor third down, if you want to think interval-wise. Subtonic doesn't exist. Here it's a G. So the leading tone will be a G sharp. It's going to be a G sharp. I know you could start saying, well, I'm just going to keep modifying these in a pattern. It's better if you pick them out of thin air. But if you see a pattern, that helps you too. It's not a big deal. We're just trying to get correct repetitions in. So we're in E major. The median is going to be G sharp because E, G sharp, B. G, you know, I'm thinking the triads right there, right? Then come down a minor to there, come down a whole step to there, or major third to there. Subtonic doesn't exist. D right there, leading tone is D sharp. And D sharp, because it's the same no matter what key you're in. B major, the median is going to be D sharp, because B, D sharp, F sharp. B, D, F sharp. The minor, sub median is going to be a G sharp. Because remember, the key of B has everything sharp except for B and E, right? And then B minor will be there because submedian gets lowered. Subtonic doesn't exist. It's an A right there, leading tone right here. It's going to be an A sharp, which is a half step below, and an A sharp, which is a half step below. It's the same, right? F sharp major, the median is going to be A sharp, right? It's going to be an A because you're just building these triads. Going backwards, it's going to be a D sharp because, remember, everything's sharp in this key except for B. So you're good right and then here you lower the sub median right there 
subtonic doesn't exist here. Whole step below F sharp is E, raising these back up. Everything's sharp except for B in this key, so it's an E sharp, half step below. Same thing there, because we raised it back up for the harmonic minor. C sharp, mediant is E sharp, and then E for right there, right? Building my triads based on that. Submediant, well, everything's sharp in the key of C sharp major, so it's gonna be an A sharp. We lower the submediant, so it's gonna be an E natural. Here, subtonic doesn't exist. Here, it's a whole step down. Remember, everything was sharp in this key, so it would have been B sharp for the leading tone. Then when we lower it down, it becomes B natural or a whole step if you're having a hard time seeing that, right? B sharp, B sharp. A flat major, well, the median is gonna be C, because A flat, C flat, C flat, because everything's flat in this key. Submedian is gonna be an F. It's gonna be an F flat, because we lowered that, right? Remember, everything is flat in this except for F, C, and G, so that's not flat, but then we lower that there. Subtonic doesn't exist. G flat is a whole step below A flat. Leading tone is a G and a G. We're almost done. We just have one more page, and then there's a bonus page of spelling things. Okay, get that in frame. All right, here we go. So some of these are the ones that don't have parallels, major and minor, you just gotta spot check them out. Median, okay, three. It's gonna be a B flat because you have all flat except for F in this. We can also spell the G flat major scale. Submediant, it's gonna be down, right, to an E flat. Again, everything's flat except for F, right? Subtonic doesn't exist in the major key. Leading tone will be a half step below. It's an F, right? Okay, A sharp minor, minor. So the median is gonna be a C sharp because everything's sharp in this key, right? And then submediant is gonna go down right, to the F, and it's going to be an F sharp, because everything's sharp in this key, right, subtonic, whole step below, it's going to be a G sharp, and then if we wanted to make it into a leading tone, we raise this back up, be G double sharp, D flat major, the median's an F, because everything is flat in this key, except for F and C, or you can spell the D flat major triad, D flat, F, A flat, submedian, you're going to go down, it's going to be a B note, but everything's flat except for F and C, so B flat, or you can go down a major third, minor third, sorry, and get there, subtonic doesn't exist in the major key, leading tone is going to be a half step below that, it's going to be C, G sharp minor, there we go, right, this is Relative major is B, right? So everything's sharp except for B and E. Or you could say G sharp minor, G sharp B, D, and that makes your minor median right there. And then going down, it's going to be an E, right? Because everything is sharp except for B and E, right? And then subtonic is going to be a whole step below. Raise this back up to make it the leading tone for that. C flat major, everything's flat, right? Everything's flat. Everything's flat except that doesn't exist. Everything's flat, okay? And then D sharp minor, the median F sharp, because D sharp, F sharp, A sharp. And then submedian is going to be a good old B, right? Because the relative major to this is F sharp major, right? Which is right there. And that's everything sharp except for B, okay? Subtonic is a whole step below that, everything sharp except for B. And then we raise this back up to give you that, okay? Again, if you're just watching the video and you're going along, Maybe that's okay, it's better than nothing, but your thing you're supposed to do is to have done all the scales and then to reach back in your mind and say, can I access this or this or this or this? And then do I know whether it's, you know, is it like major or minor third above? Is it is it a flatted note or a natural note or a sharp note on the differences between scales? Use this to help you go through and identify what you're good at, what you still need to work on, and then hopefully reassure you that you've got the right answers or the right thinking about things. Last section, and then we're we're done this. You're done this. Okay. This looks complicated, but it's actually really simple. It's saying complete the following chords by adding the correct seventh. Okay. So what it's saying is, do you know what kind of seventh goes on a dominant chord, diminished seven, half diminished seven chord, major seven chord, diminished seven chord, or minor chord? The triads are already given to you, right? Like a dominant chord is a major triad, right? Plus a minor seventh, which means that that's a root minus a whole step. That's what a minor seventh is. You go a whole step down. Right? And they've already given you, I already gave you these right here, the triads. And assuming I didn't make any mistakes, they're all good, I think. We'll see. Um, 
couple of these are theoretical. They don't actually even exist, but that's okay. So here we go. Dominance. Basically, we're making minor sevenths. We have major triads. We'll double check that. But then we just want to make a minor seventh, which is a whole step below. And since we've been doing subtonics, which is a whole step below the, the keynote of the scale, this should be easy. So B flat, D, F is a B flat major. If I want to make this dominant, I go down a whole step from there, A flat. D flat, F, A flat, go down a whole step from here. It's major triad, C flat, right? G sharp, B sharp, D sharp. Well, we already know that this is a dominant chord like that. You can also change from like, what what do I need to calculate the whole step to what is this normally? Like normally D chords make minor sevenths, which have a minor seventh them already. So if I just make this the same, that's a minor seventh. Same thing here, A, C sharp, E. This would have been a minor, if I went A, C sharp, A, C, E, G would have been a minor seventh, right? And that's already a minor seventh interval between here and here. So I could just keep it the same, right? Here's a little bit trickier one. F, A, C, E would be, F to E would be a major seventh because it makes a major seven chord. So it has to be lowered. If I have my F and my E and it's a major seventh and I lower that, it becomes minor seventh. So if I made it the same, it would be a major seventh. And if I take that away, then it becomes minor seventh. Same thing for here. B would be a major seventh up because these two make major seven chords, right? And that means there's a major seventh from there. So I got to lower this and bring it back down. Okay. Half diminished seventh chords are exactly like dominant seven chords. They have a different triad, right? Major triad, diminished triad, but the seventh is exactly the same. It's a whole step down. So a whole step down from D sharp is C sharp. A whole step down from F is E flat, right? A whole step down from B sharp is A sharp. I'm just keeping track because they're all, if the accidentals are the same, are all minor sevens, except for F chords and C chords. They have to be shrunk, right? So F went to E flat. C sharp has to go not to B sharp, but to B. G flat is the same, right? E is the same. So it's going to be a D, E, G, B, D. A flat is going to go to G flat. Only these two here don't make naturally occurring minor sevenths when the accidentals are the same and they have to be contracted down so c sharp to b f to e flat but all the other ones they're already a minor seventh right because they either make minor seven chords dominant or dominant chords or or you know and and that's uh, or half diminished chords right the b and they all have minor sevenths on them already all right major seven chord that means that we're going to have to raise a bunch of sevens to get them to be a half step so let's just start with c chords are already major sevens if you keep the accidentals the same and f chords are already major sevens on top if you keep the accidentals the same right all these other ones if we keep it the same will be too small they'll be minor sevens they need to go up one so not e flat to d flat but raise the d flat to d not D to C, but raise the C sharp up to C. Sorry, C to C sharp. Not G flat to F flat, but raise the F flat up to F. Not A sharp to, to sorry, G sharp, but you're going to have to make it G double sharp. Right? Not B to A, but A sharp. Okay? You don't have to calculate every one of these. You just have to say, well, is it these guys? If not, then we have to raise them all. Okay. Diminished sevenths. Ah, let's skip this for a minute. Go to the minor sevens. Same deal. All of these are minor triads, but if you throw the seventh on there, they're all going to be minor sevens. If you keep the starting note accidental the same as the ending note accidental, except for the F chord and the C chord, they're too big. You have to make those ones smaller. So this is not the F of the C chord, so we just make it the same. That's a minor seventh. Not the F of the C chord, we make it the same, right? You got to be able to calculate the note name. You make it the same. Right? E, G, B, D, make it the same. D, F, A, C, make it the same. C flat. These ones are too big. They're going to have to be shortened. So my C, E, G would go to a B, but we have to lower that to make it a minor 7. My F sharp, A, C, E, C sharp, E would be, if it was E sharp, it would be major 7. So we have to lose the sharp to bring it down. Okay? Diminished 7 chords. These all have a diminished 7, which is... 1.5 whole steps down, right? That means that none of these are going to get away 
with exactly the same accidental as their starting note. Remember that if it's an F chord or a C chord, it's a major seventh, so we're gonna have to lower it once the seventh to make it be minor and then again to make it diminish. Let's just do that right now. F, A, C, E, okay. Now, if it was the same, that would be a major seven, right? If we take get rid of that, that lowers it, so now it's a minor seven, and that means we have to add one more. You have to squish these twice to make it a diminished seven. There we go, right? Same thing here. B, since it's the same, would be a major seven. B flat would be a minor seven, and then B double flat would be a diminished seven. And it's kind of dumb, but that's the rules, and it stays consistent. I mean, there are cases where you'll see a B double flat, but maybe you write it as an A for less experienced players. <sighs> okay. Um, so then the rest of these start off as minor sevens, right? Just these two chords didn't, and we have to make them one smaller to make them diminished. So if we were F sharp, that would be minor, take the sharp away, right? D would go to C, but then we gotta make it one smaller, so we put a flat on it. B flat would go to A flat, but then we have to make it one smaller. A sharp would go to G sharp, but then we're gonna erase that to make it lower, okay, so G. E sharp would go to D sharp, but then we're gonna have to erase that sharp, and that's how you do that. This is just helping students with the thing that they find most difficult, which is after dealing with the triads and everything, calculating sevenths seems to be, hmm, kind of fuzzling. So there you go. Um, hope that was better than you just slogging away through the worksheets on your own. And there is a value of doing that on your own, but it's really great if you can get some instant feedback and check what you're doing. It's also efficient because you might not get as much time on this reviewing in class as you'd like. So, yeah. And hopefully, since I did this on the fly, I didn't make any mistakes. But if you caught one, grab me in class and say, did you do that right? And we'll go over it and check it. All right. See you in class.